Before you click away, today's video is not just for old people. It can apply to anybody from toddlers all the way up to uh, geriatric folks like myself. Uh, I went in for a cataract check, an eye check, uh, because I got cataracts in my left eye. I had surgery in my right eye. I wanted some options because the right eye surgery did not go very well. So I wanted to see what was going on. He did the usual eye exam on both eyes. And on the left eye, he found a uh, retinal tear and attachment on the back of the eye. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so then he sent me back and they did some very detailed scannings, which is very interesting. I mean, he could show me on a huge TV on the wall, my eye, not just like a sample eye, but my personal eye and the damage he was talking about. Okay, so what is this retinal tear and detachment thing I had? Well, before I go on, I should say, I'm not a doctor, I'm not medically trained. All I'm doing is telling you my experience, uh, and that's it. Always get your advice from your doctor. So what is retinal detachment? Well, this is from the Mayo Clinic's website. They said retinal detachment describes an emergency situation. So this is a, a serious thing if you've got it, in which the retina at the back of the eye, so that's back here, you can see it's labeled, this part back here detaches, it pulls away from its normal position, as they say. The retinal cells separate from the layers of the blood vessels that provide oxygen and nourishment. So right there, that's, that's not a good thing if it's not getting oxygen and nourishment. And the longer the retinal detachment goes untreated, the greater your risk of permanent vision loss in the affected eye. So yeah, this is something that you want to address pretty quickly. Uh, the warning signs that I found listed were uh, any or all of the following sudden appearance of floaters. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had floaters uh, my whole life, but they look like this down here. Yeah, they're not, they're not uh, like really distinct. They kind of look like worms or something that are floating in your field of vision. They're grayish. If you go outside in bright sunlight and close your eyes, you can see uh, these things floating around on your eye. Well, that's, that's what they're talking about. And oftentimes, if you just look around like at a blank wall, uh, you can see these things floating around. Okay, so it's the sudden appearance of those things. Flashes. I was getting flashes on the periphery of my eye. So it, to be honest, they kind of snuck up on me over a long period of time, so I didn't think about it. Grayish patches. So you'll have like little blurred spot, spots in your vision and other forms of reduced vision. So that's what they say. They didn't detail about what those might be. So you want to contact an ophthalmologist right away if uh, you have that and doing so can help save your vision. Uh, you know, it's, uh, if you have questions or concerns or doubts, go see your doctor. Cause I can tell you from this messed up eye that your vision is precious. Having good vision is important. Okay. So as I said, I had the peripheral flashes on this eye and no pain. So I never really thought anything about it. You know, it's just like you're getting older. You know, I don't know. It's just one of those things of life, right? So they caught this during an exam. So this kind of tells you that regular exams are important. So what did he do? Well, um, we talked about it and he just said, well, since your eyes are already dilated and I've already got all this stuff in there, uh, why don't you go ahead and do the procedure, which yeah, it wasn't cheap. And it, my insurance, I don't think is going to pay for very much of it. So Okay, so the procedure, he used a YAG laser. There are other procedures. There's one where they actually freeze the eye and I'm not quite sure they stick something in back there and freeze it or I don't know that procedure. Um, I couldn't find much on it. So he started out with drops, uh, dilate the pupil. I'm sure probably uh, anti-swelling, that kind of stuff. Uh, the procedure of the actual lasering was similar to an eye exam. But uh, it, and it looks, this is the device over here. It looks just like an eye exam type thing, except they literally, they strap your head in so you can't move. And then you can see right there, this doctor has this like little extra magnifier and they gel that up and literally stick it up against your eyeball. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, not real comfortable, but yeah, it's tolerable. When they're lasering, there is an unbelievably bright green light. I mean, it's just like, yeah. Uh, and he didn't mention at the time before he started that there would be discomfort. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can't really call it pain, but I would get like just this massive hot flash inside my eye every time he triggered that thing. 
and there was a feeling that your eyeball just suddenly grew 20% in size. Um, I wouldn't call it pain, but I would call it uh, a very strange, uncomfortable feeling I'd never had before. Having said that, even though it's not fun, I would do this every day for a week if it meant saving my vision. So, you know, let's keep the perspective there. The, uh, the uncomfortableness should never stop you from doing a, uh, a necessary procedure. So what he did is he went in there and he basically welded these spots together, the, the damaged spots. So they, they create damage and then the body goes in and heals the damage and puts things back to normal. He did 603 points uh, of lasering nine at a time. So yeah, it was, uh, yeah. So he treated the detached retina and I also had a hole back there. So he uh, did that. And uh, my post-treatment, now, you know, what the, your doctor prescribes for you may be different, but I just had two sets of eye drops three times a day for 10 days. So, you know, no big deal, something you want to do. Um, yeah. And immediately after the treatment, I, there was a little irritation, but nothing, you know, nothing you would call pain. It just felt strange. Um, and for the 10 days afterwards, uh, literally I felt nothing. So kind of, uh, yeah, no big deal there. So conclusion, um, the, my, uh, retinal detachment was probably caused by age. That's the number one cause. Now I have been hit in the head and I've had, you know, tools and whatever slam me in the face, uh, kickbacks and whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, that could be it along the way, but it's, you know, again, probably likely my age. A friend of mine got his when he was only 22, no, less than that, uh, 20, 20 years old uh, from a sports injury playing rugby. He got slammed really hard in the, in the face and the eye and uh, had uh, retinal attachment. Okay, so uh, bottom line, don't take chances with your vision get regular checkups, uh, you know, especially as you get older. And if you have an injury history of sports or whatever, definitely keep those uh, eye exams regular. Okay, well, that was it. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your future healthcare.